How to Deal When the Shit Gets Real podcast. I'm Rietta. And I'm Connie. And we're two crazy cousins who are concerned about body image today. <laughs> See? Because I got nothing. Sorry. She, she Bye, just- two well, cousins, it's fine. I don't, mm, I don't like compliments though to myself. I can compliment you, Rietta. I can't compliment myself. So trying to be like, I'm, we're two beautiful cousins. I'm like, huh? No, I'm not. Get out of here. And, and I'm is, complimenting myself. And this is why we are talking about body image. <laughs> Your cousin naming me ha- has all the body uh, issues. All the, all the body issues. I have all of them. Every I have all of the issues. You just need to name them. I have a diary of issues. It's fine. I thought you were just gonna say I have diarrhea, and I was like, Connie, TMI. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> do not tell our listeners. They will not come back. They do not want to hear about your bowel movements. <laughs> I know a lot of people who could learn from that. That statement of, I don't want to hear about your bowel mu- movements. <laughs> and, <laughs> and that's a topic for another day. <laughs> we will never get into because no thank you. Yeah, no thank you. So we're going to talk about body image because Connie just happened to be surrounded by it today. I made a post, another one of her friends made a post, and it just seems like a good topic. We're also in summer. People are wearing bikinis and Speedos or whatever the heck you like to wear at the beach or the pool. I mean, if your pool's open. <laughs> Lovely COVID. But or, yeah. yeah, or at the beach, you know, the beaches are open for the most part. So whatever you might be doing, because we all know it's hotter than Hades right now. So we know we know you in that bikini, girl. Or me not in a bikini ever. Because of her body issues. Which is what we're here to change. Hallelujah. Amen. Hey, you know what? I've gotten better over the years. Because what I have to say is when I was younger, the time where you normally think of girls wearing bikinis, I was like, oh, oh, no, no. I must be covered in a tankini. Everything must be covered. I have to wear a skirt because my thighs are too big. And I've gotten rid of the skirt and I show a little bit of stomach. I just cannot wear a skimpy. I have not gotten into me yet to not wear a high-waisted like bikini bottom. You know, I I have to wear a high waisted one. I'm like, no, 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 I can't wear a skimpy one. There's too much fat going on over here. See, and that's the thing, which is one of the things that I loved about my boudoir photographer. I got I had a boudoir session. God, it's been like two or three years now. But one of her biggest things was body positivity. And a lot of excuses of people why they wouldn't book with her would be because like, oh, I need to lose 10 pounds before I book with you or oh, I need to do this. And she'd be like, no, 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 girl, you are beautiful the way you are. And she will post, you know, all her pictures, of course, because that's her thing. And they're women of all different sizes, bigger women, smaller women, skinny women, black women, white women. Mexican. I mean, it's beautiful. All these different bodies and they're all beautiful and just in a different way. So you should be beautiful in your bikini because who said it? I can't remember who said it. They said, if you have a body, it is a bikini body. Oh, I love it. Yeah, no, mine still isn't. So you'll never get me to change my mind. Um, but I love that you're trying. Of course I'm going to try. And the only reason why it's like, I I am much more, I've lost a lot of weight. So I am more comfortable in my body. I would probably be more comfortable doing like a boudoir photography as long as I I'm not completely and totally naked. I would be okay. But it's just something that like a high waisted bikini looks better on me. Like I'd rather just wear that because it looks okay. And so I'm not as self-conscious. But I did buy now a one piece bathing suit. You may not think of as sexy. Oh, no, there's some sexy ones out there. I have one and I think it's pretty damn sexy. Just saying. But this one is because it goes, it basically just has two strips of fabric that just go past my boobs and down. And like that's it. And that's my, and then it goes down into like the bottom portion of it. Yeah. I figured, I figured you didn't have your your vagina hanging out. 
<laughs> but don't I? No, I'm just kidding. Um, but I do wear that one, but I'm saving it for, like, I wore it one time, like, when I first got it, and now I'm saving it for Vegas in August. But either way, it's still much more revealing than all of my ones that I've had in the past, like all of my swimsuits and stuff, because I've become more comfortable. I am just not at the level yet where I am comfortable in a bikini, like a straight up, like string Mm -hmm. bikini. That's basically no material is just not my jam yet. I'm working my way up there. Jeez, Rietta. (laughs) Just kidding. (laughs) Well, that, that that one piece definitely sounds like a Vegas bikini or Vegas. It is. And it's black and white striped, and I have a big white, like, sun hat. There I'm like, go. oh, yeah. You better take a very Marilyn Monroe-esque picture. Yes, that's, you know, we're on the same wavelength, because that's basically what I was thinking when I bought it and then got the sun hat. Mm-hmm. So I was like, this is 10 out of 10. I don't have her tattooed on my arm for no reason. But anyway, <laughs> so my battle, because it's, you know, the newest thing is the the thong bikini bikinis were like your butt is out and i was always like oh i don't know this seems first of all in a if i've got my kid with me but i mean kids don't notice stuff like that so once i got past that portion it was like okay i'm stuck in my head which i talked about on my post and in, on instagram that I have a tendency to go with what they call catastrophic thinking where I think everybody on the beach is like, ew, oh my God, why is she wearing that? Why would, what? No, that's not good. Why She shouldn't be wearing that. When more than likely 90% of those people don't give a shit what I'm wearing. Yeah. So I pretty much just bought a bikini, a thong bikini and said, I'm going to wear this until I feel comfortable in it. And that's so why. did you like start wearing it around the house first, like outside in like your backyard in private, or did you just start wearing it until you were comfortable on the beach? I just started wearing it to the beach and it's nice when you have a husband who's supportive because he comes along and gives my booty a little pat and we'll be like, honey, you look beautiful. So that helps. Well, not cool. saying that that is necessary and that like I need him to reinforce me. But it's nice to have that support when they know you're stepping out of outside of your comfort zone. But nope, I just went all for it. I bought one. Of course, I tried it on in the house to make sure like it fit and my vagina wasn't hanging out because I definitely am not ready for that. That's a little too much exposure, huh? Too much exposure. <laughs> That's something um, only the gynecologist is, and myself and your husband, or not myself, not me, but yourself, myself, ourselves. Yeah, I know what you meant. Uh, and your husband are supposed to see and That's about it. Yeah, that's about it. So, yeah, there's none of that. There are topless beaches here, which I guess might be maybe the next step. I don't know if I'll ever get there because I don't, don't post know. a picture. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. There will be no picture posting. It's just like for myself more. But I mean, when you think about nudity here and nudity in Europe, we're very prude when it comes to nudity compared to Still am. the Europe and all that stuff. I like that they embrace their bodies, though, that they aren't ashamed to be on a nude beach and do Like, I think that's great. Like, I would love to feel that way where I could just walk around and be like, yep, this is me. Take it or leave it. So really what you're saying is that you're preparing yourself to go to a nude beach in Europe. Got it. <laughs> Not necessarily. I just think that right. I love I love that they are so more carefree than we are. Like, there's not this like, oh, my God, it shouldn't be hanging out. They're just like, nope. It's your beautiful body, and do you, boo, because that's our thing on here now. Yeah, exactly. You do you, boo-boo. Hey. <laughs> um, and she seems some Fonzie in there, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whatever. I ro- roll with the flow. Yeah, I do like body positivity, but at the same time, there are people that have gone through my head that I just, like, thought of that I'm not going to mention that I also think – there is a point where your body can be unhealthy. Oh, and absolutely. That's not body positivity. When you're crazy overweight and you're like, no, I am beautiful as I am, but you're 20 and have arthritis and are, you know, 300 pounds overweight, that's not body positivity anymore. That's a problem. Oh, that's no. a health issue. Yeah, no, I agree with you for sure. And Connie and I obviously are not hating on anybody out there. It's just a simple fact that 
when you are a certain weight compared to your height, it is unhealthy. It's unhealthy for your heart. It's unhealthy for a lot of things. And yes, both for po- body positivity, but also for health also. Yes. You should be healthy. And if that is your weight, that is your weight. Because sometimes I do wake up in the morning and think, I mean, this is just how I've always looked. But as I started to, like, lose more weight, that concept in, like, my head that, like, oh, well, I'm just always going to be on the fatter side changed. I've actually also, mm-hmm. Rihanna, gone back to your workout plan that you first gave me way back when because it's been months without no working out, basically. There you go. Well, no working out. There you go. See, it's coming. It's coming full circle. <laughs> coming back. I'm going to need another one in uh, three weeks. <laughs> no problem. No problem. Just let me know. But that is a good point to make that your image can change. And I think we should kind of talk about what maybe even leads to why we have these negative body images, like how we got here. Was it something that you grew up with? Connie, maybe, I don't know for sure. You can obviously chime in. I mean, your, your mom was heavier your whole life. Is it just something you've witnessed or is it just, you know where I'm going? I'm trying to figure out how to say this. Like, You know what I think it is, is so what from when I was young, I ate too much and nobody really told me, they told me to stop eating, but in rude ways. I remember one time I went and I got like ice cream out of the freezer And my mom said something rude, like, you shouldn't be eating that. And so, like, then, you know, you're a teenager, so you're fucking defiant as shit. And you're like, watch me, bitch. (laughs) Like, (laughs) this bowl filled with ice cream, you know. And, And I also saw, like, my two brothers eating And I never thought a girl should ever be different than a boy. I was like, no, like anything you can do, I can do better. So I'm like, no, if the boys are having two helpings of spaghetti, so should I, even if I'm full. Yeah. And you don't really see those differences as a kid. So I believe when I was a kid, I overate. And then as I got older, like none of the fat, like, you know, when you hear about like when you hit puberty like oh the fa- the fat just like melted away like that never really happened to, to mm-hmm. me so I just assumed well maybe this is just how my body is and then I also thought like well I'm not crazy overweight mm-hmm. so it's okay and then what changed my opinion was seeing my wedding photos me and Tom were like holy shit we look so much bigger even though we never felt bigger yeah. than when we first met because, you know, after a wedding, you see a lot of pictures of from when you first met to then when you actually got married. And it's like, whoa. Yeah. And also we were then in a time in our life where we were moving back into our house after the remodel because we had like no bathroom, no kitchen. So you had to move out of the house for it to be finished. And then we moved mm-hmm. back in. And we had a chance to start fresh. And that's when we decided, okay, I'm not even going to go and look down the processed food aisles. We're not going to take home any carbs. And we're just going to completely like 180 change. And we've stuck with it ever since. Yeah. And I think that is where a lot of bad body image comes from. At some point in your life, there was some sort of negative comment that was made or negative association or something was said that stuck with you for whatever reason, because it was your mom or because it was your aunt or because it was your brother. That wasn't one of the tip of the icebergs. That that was actually the smallest example of somebody telling me that I was overweight. The biggest one was somebody forcing me to go out and exercise with them. Mm-hmm. And then telling me at the age of 12, maybe 13, that if you're fat, no one will ever love you. That is the biggest comment that was ever made to me. And in my state of mind of rebellion, I thought, well, fuck you, you know? Well, of course. I mean, nobody wants to hear that, teenager or otherwise, and especially at a teenager when you're at a delicate 
place and everything you take very seriously and very personally. But either way, you know, that's I feel like every person that I've kind of talked to about body image, there was a there was one at least one major point in their life that somebody said something to them either nasty or unkind, <clears throat> excuse me, and it just stuck with them and it's just been following them around for 10 years. Well, and 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 on top of that, so yes, there's probably people that are making some sort of nasty comment, but on top of that, you then see reinforcement. Yes. Because you see reinforcement in magazines that everybody is skinny and perfect and all one shape, one size, one height, one width, you know, there's no variant. And also movies. My one girlfriend would always state to me that she would be loved no matter what she looked like, like in Beauty and the Beast, because the only thing that mattered what was what was inside. And that is true. That should be true to a point. It should be true until it starts affecting your health, your well-being, your abilities. Because right. let me tell you, if you can't walk around without feeling pain... And you're only 27, 25, 22 years old. That's not right. That's another big point, obviously. The media makes us think. And, you know, when I think back to when I was a teenager and I had, you know, Cosmo magazine and all that stuff, that's all you saw, like Connie said, was super skinny, beautiful, long hair, really tall, like these just beautiful women And that was like all you saw. You didn't see anybody that was a little bigger or was bustier or had a big butt. Like there wasn't any of that. Everybody, like Connie said, was cookie cutter and looked exactly the same. At least at least now we are starting to see more rounded bodies, people that are more voluptuous, which is great because that that is more realistic. Not saying that there aren't skinny people and that they don't get hate on either. I mean, I have plenty of friends that are really skinny that get made fun of too because they're too skinny yeah and actually my one friend was told multiple times that she was anorexic she's like no I eat a shit ton of food this is who I am mm-hmm. no matter what I do working out eating wise I am just this real thin and that's how I used to be I even had a softball coach who thought it was funny he called me toothpick Vic just because you know it rhymed and it went together <laughs> And he thought it was funny, but I was like 12 years old. Oh my God, no. And and I did not think it was funny. So there are certain things that stick with you. Like, and I'm, and then of course, when you change for me, you know, I was super, super skinny. Like a lot of the women in our family were. And then you hit college and you start to get a little more womanly. Like you get hips and boobs and you're, you're like, what is going on with my body? I don't understand. (laughs) <laughs> and people are telling you you don't fit into this box. And, you know, I was picked on, which I'm sure everybody was picked on in a way. But, I mean, people used to tell me I was ugly and I was too short and blah, blah, blah. And some of that sticks with you. And like Connie said, the very one that sticks in her mind is, you know, no one's ever going to love you because you're fat, which is horrible. I can't even imagine somebody saying that to me. I, I'm i 90% sure I know who said it to you. And she should be slapped for it since she always wants to slap everybody else. And she doesn't even remember. Of course she doesn't. Of course she doesn't remember. But, I mean, it was the same thing. You remember the mean things, and it's terrible that you remember the mean things. But that's why we wanted to talk about this, because we want to get the positivity out there. And it needs to be out there, because there are so many people that are being mean to themselves, because they think that they're ugly or they don't fit in this box, and there is no box to fit in. Yes, you. <laughs> exactly. It's me to a T. Hey, hey, I'm working on it. I told you I have changed my, you know, bathing suits. <laughs> well, things have changed, too. My my mom talked about how she used to be made fun of for her lips in high school. She had really big, voluptuous lips. Really? Which girls didn't really have. You know, or she just, so they made fun of her. And now it's the thing. People are getting lip injections to look like. What and she's she probably like, like, what the hell? <laughs> no, she is like, what the hell? She's like, I had that naturally, and I got made fun of. And now people are getting injections. So it's just funny how things change. Things shake out. 
so was that toothpick Vic one the the bullying that that sticks out in your mind when you think of your body image or is it something else it's a lot of things I think just because I had a really hard time making friends when I was younger even when I was in high school girls were always girls used to be very competitive with each other I don't know if it's changed but even like pretty much still the same even people that I thought were my best friends there was like this constant competition going on like oh you don't have a boyfriend but I do and it's like okay, well, I play sports and I do this, so I don't really have time for a boyfriend. But, I mean, if that makes you feel better. So it's kind of, for me, it's more like an accumulation of things over time. Like when I was younger, I made fun, I was made fun of for being too skinny and too short. You know, I got called shrimp and toothpick and all this stupid crap. And then as I got older and I felt like I fell out, then it was just like, oh, well, she's prettier. You know, I'm prettier than you. I wear a size smaller. I, You know, it was just this constant Oh, no, comparison that's... and battle that you you always felt like you were losing so it just kept knocking you back a rung and if you think about it social media now does not help like good good lord thank goodness when we were growing up you know there wasn't any social media so you didn't see people literally commenting on your photos or whatever saying that type of shit to you and saying it to your face like you're not getting double you're not getting double penetrated with this shit <laughs> When you were younger. <laughs> That's what she said. It is. <laughs> it really is what she said. <laughs> I'm sorry. I couldn't resist because that was a, that was like a golden. That's what she I said. I know. I know. I knew you were going to. That's why I went with it. <laughs> I was thinking about changing my, my wording and I was like, nah, go with it, Connie. There are going to be people laughing out there going, eh, she said double penetration. <laughs> <laughs> that was the plan. You're Any- welcome, guys. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Hilarious. Anyway, yeah, now you have to get it on all sides from everybody. It's like, and because of social media, you then see all of the people for a voluptuous, you know, body. Kim Kardashian. Mm-hmm. I, I hate her. I hate all of the Kardashians, really. They make me want to shoot myself. But you then see their idealized bodies everywhere Mm -hmm. and you're like why the fuck can't i look like that versus when we were younger it was you would see it in magazines yeah like in magazines yeah and everybody was skinny it's different first first it was everybody was really skinny and now we're like we are going more to the voluptuous side which i feel is more natural i mean if you look back in history at the romans and all that those women were voluptuous and that was considered you know an ideal woman because of course it there's a reason it's shaped like that, you know, the hourglass shape. It wasn't yeah. the figure. But now we've got hourglasses and pears and apples and all sorts of different body shapes. Because not There's everybody not- can have a peach butt and not everybody can have big boobs and not everybody can have long hair. I think you've proved with your Instagram photo that if you try, you can succeed. <laughs> <laughs> well, some oh, of that is genetics, and some of that is working out. Because you've seen our ants, there is some genetics to that. <laughs> no, I guess you're right. Because actually, it's one of the things that my uh, husband said. He was like, "You got a, gr- you have an ass." Like he's like, "Your your bottoms would fit better than hers." And I was like, "Yeah, she's still skinnier than me." Like she, he wasn't talking about you. He was talking about my friend who posted a photo, who was just like, "This is just who I am." Like in a bikini, and I know it doesn't look perfect, but this is who I am, which is great. And Tom was like, well, well, why don't you? And I'm like, because it's not what my body looks good in right now. He's like, but you have a better ass. I'm like, well, I know that. <laughs> I need some work. I also know that it needs work. See, but that's the thing. That's the thing we want to talk about. You don't necessarily need work. Oh, I, I need lots of it. Oh, my Lanta. You need <laughs> to embrace your body how it is as long as it's as long as it's healthy like we said like we don't want you to be 300 pounds overweight but just because you don't have a flat stomach like she does doesn't mean that you aren't beautiful it's not flat but it's well that was just my reference i not necessarily to that person well, well and also i still view myself as probably like 20 to 40 pounds overweight so I'm like no no no. I will wear one when I am comfortable when I've lost more weight I'm hoping to lose like another 
hopefully 10 pounds before we go to Vegas. We'll see what happens. I'm already a pound down. Okay. It's beside the point. Um, Cause I told him I did buy a bathing suit. That's m- more of a bikini bottom and even skimpier top. Mm-hmm. Like it's actually really cute. You know, when, when you buy something, you're like, ah, it just needs like a couple pounds off and it would look good. Mm-hmm. That's exactly what this suit is. I'm, so I'm like, I want to fit in this suit by the time Vegas comes. I don't know if I've waited too long, probably, but <laughs> I'll try. Yeah. And those are the ideas that we need to get out of our head. Like, I thought the same thing. Oh, I don't I don't have the body to wear a bikini bottom swimsuit. Like, I can't do that. I'm too old, you know. Not that I'm old, but usually it's the 20-year-olds that are wearing the bikini bottoms. And then I'm like, there is no age limit, size limit, body limit on this. Well, I'm wearing this bikini. Why is a swimsuit that is a little too small that you thought was going to fit but ended up being a little too small? It then ends up becoming, okay, I need to lose a little weight to get into that. <laughs> well, yeah, if it doesn't fit you, again, we don't want your vagina hanging out at the beach. Like, make sure it's kept. <laughs> Well, it's just one of those things where it's like, it's a smidge uncomfortable right now. It fits. It looks horrible because it's tight. It's the, okay, it's time to lose a few pounds. I actually also, and I got it for super cheap. Like, I think it was $10. Like, Oh, you can't beat that. So I wasn't going to go return it. And it's the same thing with this shirt I bought at Kohl's. It looks fine right now. But, like, there's just, like, I have to unbutton, like, the top button or so because my, like, boob and waist side is, like, too big for it. Like, it gaps. And I'm like, well, if I lose a few pounds, it'll be even better. (laughs) And I like those kind of clothing because then when it starts to finally feel loose, you're like, oh, yeah, I lost those few pounds. So it's also something to look forward to. There you go. I just, uh... The biggest thing I think Kanye and I both wanted to do on the whole body image thing is just to not let your body image define you. For men and women. Sometimes. For men and women, yes. It's a very small portion of who you are. Obviously, when you are looking for a mate, you want to be at least slightly physically attracted to them. There needs to be some sort of attraction. But the things that are even bigger that will keep you together for 60 plus years like our grandparents is your love and your personalities and beauty fades like they've always talked about so you can't let your body image control your whole life actually you know what's even I I don't know if it's funny or sad but my friends are like watch you're gonna lose all this weight Connie and then you're gonna get pregnant. I'm like, well, you're an asshole. That doesn't mean I can't lose my pregnancy weight, okay? <laughs> nice. So you're a mustache, you're a man. I must ask you a question. Of course. <laughs> but yeah, I I laughed at that. I was like, thanks guys. That's usually how it goes, honestly. And you know, that's another example of how if you are really overweight. Most people don't get pregnant because your body's not going to let you because it's not in a healthy state to support a baby. Like I was telling Connie, it's she used to be a part of the family. We'll just say that. We won't go any farther than that. Recently told me she was pregnant and like six months before that, she started working out for the first time in forever. And I was like, well, I'm not surprised you started working out. Your body's like, hell yeah, we're getting healthy. All right. I'm ready to hold this baby now. Yeah. And you know what's even funnier is I've heard somebody in our family say this, that if you work out, then you don't want a baby. That's not true. If that was true, I would not have a baby. (laughs) I would not have a child. She says that if you are trying to run a marathon or if you are working out a lot, that you would not be able to get pregnant. That's not true. I I know. I know it's not. I I I hold my tongue every time I hear it. The only thing I could think of that maybe her reasoning is, is when you do get lower in body fat percentage, because women aren't really naturally supposed to be super low in body fat percentage, you do stop getting your period. But that doesn't mean that you, just because you don't have period doesn't mean you can't get pregnant. It's just because your hormone levels are all wonky and you're, you're really thin. So it just kind of changes things. But that's, if that was true, there'd be a lot of people that didn't have babies in this world. And I used to be a big time runner I mean, I never ran a marathon because 
I'm not going to go into my thoughts on marathons. We're just going to leave that alone. I've never ran a marathon. I did run a half, but I've got a baby. It's out there. He's not a baby anymore, but. You still had a child. I had a child. So, yeah. And I still work out. Yeah, and I, w- I told my friends who are like, well, you know, if you have a baby, you'll probably just gain all that weight back. And I said, hopefully it should only really be the baby weight to get off because I'm going to eat the same that I eat now. I'm not going to change any of the good habits I've picked up. I'm not all of a sudden like, yeah. oh, I'm pregnant. I can eat shit because that's a bad idea. That is a good topic though to bring up because actually one of the girls that commented on my body image post that I made today was talking about trying to accept her pregnant body because it can it can be difficult you are gaining weight you're getting bigger you're holding this baby it is you know you're going through all these changes your hormones are going so you're like "Eh, I'm getting bigger I don't like this so it is hard to accept but you have to remember which is what I told her today in the post you are a beautiful woman making a beautiful life And in nine months, you're going to have this amazing baby and then you can work your way back. But it's worth it in the long run and you just kind of have to go with it. I get it's hard because I felt the same way too, being somebody that has worked out my whole life. As you get bigger and your belly gets bigger, you're like, holy crap, this is really weird. I feel weird. This is hurting. You're like, I don't like this. Oh, no, it totally freaks me out. I want the end product, but the the whole journey of being pregnant freaks me the fuck out it does but once you give birth and you see that little baby you forget about everything oh i know like i i I know that that's like the end goal all the things that can like go wrong it's just to me it it weirds me out like i get pregnancy i understand how it all works i understand that it is natural but at the same time it gives me anxiety like i'm like oh god I it is a crazy process. Year? Ooh, weird. It is a crazy process, and it is amazing what our bodies can do. And just kidding. <laughs> it is amazing, hey. but it does cause body image a lot of you know because again people have put this stigma on women and how they're supposed to look. That when they're pregnant, they're like, oh my god, now I chose not to look like this, but it's okay. It's worth it, and you can always go back. Yeah, it's called working out again. Like you just continue doing what you were yeah. doing. I mean, your body does change. Like, my body's definitely different now than it was before I had a kid. Well, of course. Your hips get wider. Things change. But it also has to do with you getting older as well. But that's just, that's another thing we have to just learn to accept. Like, your body's going to change as you get older. You're not going to look like you did when you were 20 when you're 30. That's just how it is. And let us say that you don't need... The liposuction, the surgeries, because we've known aunts, uh, quite a few of our family members have gone under the so-called knife, and it's not necessary. You don't need it. You would look just as fine if you didn't have, have any of the surgeries. Well, and you know what's sad about that, too, is not only now have they gotten the surgeries and they don't necessarily look better, now they've got the scars from the surgeries. Yeah. Well, I've never really seen any of the scars from any of the surgeries, but it's beside the point. There are scars for sure. Oh, I'm sure there are. But I'm just saying for the general population, you don't need it. Do I sometimes think about it? Yes. I'm just kidding. <laughs> like, it would be a quick and easy solution. But that's not how uh, the day is won. Because I asked, actually, I asked somebody who is bigger why they did not get their... Um, stomach stapled or like the band Mm -hmm. and they basically told me what good is it if I get this done but my eating habits haven't changed I'll then go back to the size that I was like you have to change your eating habits because it could be only a temporary fix if you do go back to the way you were eating before the surgery It's just going to go back. Well, that's why when you watch My 600 Pound Life, Dr. Nazardin, the first thing he does is say, here's a 1,200 calorie diet, lose 80 pounds in the first two months, prove to me that you can do this without the surgery, and then I will give you the surgery to help as a second source. Yeah. And I guess that's how they did it. Well, not how they did it, but that's their thinking on it. That's why they've never done it before. 
So, yeah, you really don't need it unless you're like one of those people that is 600 plus pounds and you are in trouble and you need the help. Otherwise, you just got to do it the good old fashioned way. Yep. That's how I'm doing it with the help of Rietta. <laughs> Rietta and eating good food. Yep, you got to eat good food. And like we talked about in previous podcasts, nothing should be ruled out. You shouldn't have to cut anything out necessarily. You can if you want to. But moderation, control, portion control, all that fun stuff. Yep. And also, this is not just for girls. There are plenty of guy issues out there. Yeah. Add the men in there. Let's talk about the dad bods. I figured it was about time. We've we talked enough about ourselves. <laughs> yeah, we have. Let's talk about the dad bods, the sexy dad bods out there. Yeah, you know what? When me and Tom were overweight, I was like, what? You have a great looking dad bod. It's fine. Like, it's totally in. And he was like, shut up. And now, like, he comes to me and he, like, kind of sucks it in. He's like, look how thin I am. I'm like, yeah, but you're also sucking it in a little bit. <laughs> so, like, uh, even the playing field but uh he also gets like really self-conscious about like his red hair and grays just getting older in general yeah and getting older in general. Hair, he's always like oh my god it looks like shit i'm like dude your hair doesn't even change it's red i don't yeah it's red hair you put some stuff in it it goes to the side it like it rarely changes unless you take a shower and then there's no stuff in it anymore it gets like pretty flat mm-hmm. I was like, then put some stuff in it. It's fine. You have red hair. You're yeah. a ginger. Get over it. You should be used to this by now. This has been your whole life. <laughs> you didn't dye your hair red. <laughs> Tom could be saying the same thing to you, though. Get over it. Wear the bikini. <laughs> he did. He already did. And I already shut him down. See, you can't have the same argument. But Kyle is the same way, too. He's starting to get grays. But the guys at work call him the silver fox, which I think is hilarious. I love and- it. And um, he's funny. He was a gymnast his whole life. So when he doesn't have a six pack, he's like, I'm fat. And I'm like, I'm going to fucking punch you. (laughs) You are not fat just because your six pack is not showing through. Like, get over yourself. You know what, though? Like, that's hilarious. And it and it's so funny because Tom is almost the same way. He he, except it's more like nostalgic. Like, he's like, yeah, when I was like a freshman in high school. I had a six pack. I was like, that's nice. You don't anymore. See, but Kyle's not that far off. In a long time there, bud. I don't know why you keep bringing this up. See, Kyle's not that unreal. He's had a, he's always had one until like more recently, it gets a little harder, but it's usually there. But occasionally like if we have a big meal or something, he's like, look, and he's like sticking his stomach out. I'm like, no, 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 no. Well, that, no, that doesn't count. <laughs> like, congratulations. You ate. <laughs> he's doing the opposite of Tom. Instead of sucking it in, he's pushing it out. I'm like, that does not, no, n- that doesn't count. Exactly. Actually, my, um, my brother-in-law is like that too. Like you're like, do you know how many people would kill to to look like you? You like naturally hold on to muscle. You don't even necessarily have to work out, and like you're still muscular just because you've done it for your whole life. Like, shut up. Yeah. (laughs) Well, and then that's the thing is, okay, so family members of Tom's, um, they are like the opposite of us. They are like both super skinny, and so it's another couple, right? So the girl's really skinny. And the guy is, like, skinny, but with, like, thinner muscles, like, that lean muscle. Mm-hmm. And he always hates it because, like, Tom does nothing. He has just naturally, like, large arms because he's always weightlifted from when he was younger. He doesn't necessarily have the stomach, obviously, like I was telling you. He's daydreaming about high school, which I think is quite hilarious. It's adorable. Uh, Yes, but, like, he's just a big framed guy, and, like, this, and I feel like a shrinks, at least, like, our shoulder-wise, like, we have, mm-hmm. like, wider shoulder and rib cages. I don't know if it's just me, but, like, and I also n- noticed it on one of our other, like, girl, co- our other girl cousin. No, so, we, I, I, we definitely all have wide ribs. I was literally just talking, when we were, I was working out with my girlfriends earlier, like, I have wide ribs, it's just... It, yeah, it, it, it is. just is what it is. And obviously, I'm not removing any ribs, so. Yeah. Well, and it's, 
I'm still fat, but like, even if I got skinnier, I would still be a little wider just because my ribs I know are wide. I've, I've said this to Kyle before. And I know I have a little bit broader of shoulders too, because of my, yeah, I've said this to Kyle before too. Like I would, I mean, I could get thinner if I wanted to, but if I got thinner, I'd look weird because like my ribs would still be out here and then my stomach would come in and it would just, it would look, it wouldn't look right. That's that's not right. That's not what we're going for. Not a great look. That is not the look I'm going for. I do not want to look like weird Skeletor with like this weird contoured waist. But what I'm getting at is that obviously we have different shapes, but it's funny to think of the reverse of not. It's not funny, but it is true. And people do have these thoughts of people who are skinnier, thinner, who are like, man, I wish I could put on more muscle. And I just physically can't. I go and I work out every day. And he has literally never been as muscled as my husband. And my husband has rarely works out. He only eats healthy. We go on like walks and stuff. That That's about as yeah. much work as he does. But he always has muscles. No, and that's that's another good point. Every we've already talked about how everybody is different, but it is every everybody is different. Like my husband holds on to naturally a lot, holds on to muscle a lot more naturally than other people, and I'm kind of the same way too. I have a very naturally built f- muscular frame, so if I stop working out and then going back, it doesn't take me long to pick muscle back up. But I'll never have a six pack. But my girlfriend who competes can have a six pack. No problem. Like everybody's different. Some you have a six pack, you don't. You have a butt, you don't. Like you're taller, you're shorter. It's just how your body's I'm made. Oddly shaped. It's fine. I'm oddly shaped too. We've got the weird trank gene that has the wide rib cage. It's super freaking weird. But you know, don't be mad because that is all I'm talking about. I'm just weirdly shaped. It's fine. You well, you I can't be mad. I got 99 problems. It's not a problem. That's what God graced you with. And that's what you get. And you love it, girl. Mm. I'm trying to love it less. I'm trying to have less to love. Oh, did I tell you? I totally smacked Tom for this one a while back. Before COVID, we were going to the gym regularly, right? And he saw me put on one of my sports bras. And you know what sports bras do. They expand. You put it on and it, like, fits to you. Right. Took it off. I, I can't remember if I was putting it on or taking it off. And he was like, wait a minute, because it's small, obviously, because it's now not on my body. He's like, wait a minute, where's my wife that's this size? And I was like, shut the fuck up. It is a sports bra. It is sucking me in. That is doing its job. It's supposed to be smaller than what my frame is. Right. Because it's just spandexy material. I was like, asshole. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's exactly what I said. Hey, I, like, I mean, I'm sure most women out there at some point in another have worn Spanx, either under a wedding dress or a regular dress. I know somebody at some point has worn sure. some Spanx to smooth out that body. Oh, it for- is what it is. Just like you can't be mad that, like, Fine. maybe she has great eyebrows and you don't. Well, you just didn't get her eyebrows. It is what it is. I absolutely love Spanx. And now that I've lost the weight, I'm like, I really don't need it. And I'm not going to, like, I'm already a large. I don't really feel like I should have to need the Spanx anymore. You know what I mean? I don't know if that makes any sense at all. Because I'm sure there are people that are my size that are like, no, 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 you still need Spanx, bitch. Um, But I I guess now because clothing fits better, I just don't, I don't even. Like, I'm not going to try to squeeze myself into it. If it doesn't fit, it doesn't fit. Right, exactly. It was when I was at the 1XL part when I was like, no, I'm going to put some Spanx on to make this look better. I love and this. Now- I, I just checked my Facebook just because I wanted to see if anybody else said anything about my post and, like, if I could use any of it in what we're doing right now. And actually, I just got a really awesome post from a, from a friend that I've had since kindergarten. And he literally put... What if I told you I made fun of you in kindergarten because you were my crush? And it's kind of funny because that is how it used to be. Guys used to pick on you if they liked you. But that's so, not really. Making fun of my sports bra because he loves me. There you go. See, it came full circle. I helped you. You're welcome. 
<laughs> no, I mean, I knew he was joking. And I think also the second part of it was he's never actually seen me put on or take off a sports bra before. Like, I'm normally, like, going and doing my own thing. Like, he's doing, like, his clothes are in a separate bedroom. So we are getting changed in different spaces. So he's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. What is this sports bra mechanism? It is magic. It expands. Ooh. Oh, Tom. <laughs> and then he takes the life. Oh, Tom. I don't think he's ever, yeah. He doesn't so, know. Yeah. Girls. No, he didn't. Most guys don't know girl stuff. But that was all our main point. Just don't be so hard on yourself, basically. Laugh about it. Hey, and also... For other people who do feel insecure, you don't have to be so ballsy like Rietta, who's just going out and wearing the bathing suit. Fuck y'all. You can be like me, where you take small steps into feeling better, wearing stuff you normally wouldn't wear that are a little bit more, like, tighter, and seeing how it goes. Uh, the day I wore, the one day I wore that that bathing suit that basically shows everything except from the good parts uh everybody complimented me except for my husband who called me a zebra <laughs> that's hilarious he but you know what if if i got rid of every single clothing that he made a comment on i would be going naked i have a very cute dress that i wore to isaac's uh you know the baptism and he said tablecloth <laughs> he's like that's a very pretty tablecloth i'm like thank you well that's men for you yeah but, yeah um but in general you can try and go a little bit out of your comfort zone at a time you don't have to be like right i'm being like bam well in all fairness i do have a therapist and she is helping me work through the catastrophic thinking and getting over the what ifs and doing all that. So it's not like I just like did it willy nilly on my own. I do have somebody who's helping me get through all the muck. Yes. And when all, when all else fails, I mean like what we all probably need is a therapist. Let's, let's be real. All right. Well, thank you guys for tuning in. I'm Rietta. I'm Connie. And thank you for listening.